Hey girl, hey. Hey brothers in Christ, good morning. I won't be before you too long. This is a really quick word and I'll probably jump on today to do quite a few really quick words just based on my quiet time with God and what he's speaking to me. And of course, when he gives messages to me, it's not always just for me, right? Um, as a prophetic voice or an evangelist or a pastor, whatever whatever God is calling you or anointing you to do, anoint whatever he's anointed you to do. To be anointed, it means to be chosen for a set purpose by God, right? So whatever, whatever he's anointed you to do, nine times out of 10, when he's speaking to you, it's not just for you, <laughs> like it's for his body which is why he says in scripture that um, to not be wearied by what we're going through because our brothers and sisters are going through the same things, right? So normally when he gives a word, um, and somebody probably needed to hear this too, whatever your calling is, whatever your ministry is, whatever God has anointed you to do, right? Um, because our calling is nothing without him. Like we're called by him, the gifts that he gives us we're only able to operate in those gifts because of him, right? If he takes his hands off of us, we there's there's nothing. There's no gifting. There's no prophesying. There's no anything. It all comes from him. But when he's talking to you in your quiet time and having you read certain scriptures, a lot of the times those things are not just for you. So that's why I say I'll be on probably a few times today just sharing with you guys what God has been giving me and based on the comments of the words that he's had me release most recently, those words <laughs> have been confirmation for so many people and it just lets me know the season that a lot of his children are in in this hour. But anyways, let me make this quick because I got to get out of here within the next five minutes. But this morning I was studying um, 1 Samuel. I was actually studying different scriptures. 1 Samuel was one of them. And we've all read the scripture that I'm about to go over with you plenty of times. But I'm going to explain it to you guys how the Lord explained it to me. Okay, because he's smart. He's <laughs> smarter than us. And yeah, so... It says in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, but the Lord, my face is itching, Holy Spirit. Uh, but the Lord said to Samuel, this is when he sent Samuel to anoint David, right? He sent Samuel to anoint David as king, right? So Samuel had to go to David's father's house. David had a lot of brothers. So Samuel didn't know who he was going to anoint, right? The Lord was just telling him, I'm gonna like let you know who the anointing is supposed to fall upon, right? And I'm paraphrasing the story. Um, but he goes to, Samuel goes to David's dad's house and he's like trying to pour the anointing oil over his brothers and it will not run, right? And that's because God had not called his brothers to be king, he had called David. So when he um, placed the oil over David's head, the oil began to flow because that was the one that God had chosen. That was God, That was the one that, God had anointed for this position, right? And to be anointed means to be called, to be chosen, divinely chosen by God for a task, for a position, for a calling, right? So a lot of people know this scripture. It's um, 1 Samuel 16, verse seven. It says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart, right? So first things first, let's just make this clear. God sees people differently than we see, him, see them. And the way that we see them will always be different from God because we can't see the hearts of people. He can see deep within. He knows their intentions. He knows their motives. He knows what they're going through. Okay, so we will never be able to see people exactly how God sees them. Now, he will allow us to see portions of them like we will be able to see the God in them. But the way God sees a person, we will never be able to see a person exactly as God does. He's God. He sits higher than us. He sees differently than us. His perspective is different than ours. We're just mere humans, but he's God. He can see deep down inside. He can see the motives. He weighs the hearts of men. He weighs our hearts, right? 
So you ever hear people when they mess up and they sin and they're like, God knows my heart, right? Some people say it and it's like, yeah, God does know your heart. You're a sinner and you're, you intentionally sin all the time, okay? But then there's some people that sin and they're like, God knows my heart. Like, I repented. Like, he knows my heart. Like, I didn't mean it. And that may be true for that person. Yeah, they sinned in the moment, but that was never their intention, right? That they, they didn't go into it with a motive to sin or to do wrong. And God can see that. And he does see the heart, right? So he can see the hearts of people, everybody. He knows those that say a thing, but don't mean it. He knows the ones that say a thing and <laughs> face Holy Spirit. He knows the ones that say a thing and they wholeheartedly do mean it, okay? He weighs the heart. He'll always look at people differently than we do, okay? Because he can see on a deeper level. He can see internally. We'll always only see externally, right? And we have to judge things based on actions. And even actions, basing things um, off of the actions of a person is not always accurate. It's not always accurate, right? You'll know a person by the fruit they bear. It does not say you'll know a person by their actions. God says you'll know them by the fruits, what they're producing in their lives, who they give um, glory and honor to for the things that they have. Like you'll know them by their fruit. What are they producing? What, what are they producing? What godly fruit are they producing? Not by their actions, because you really can't know a person by their actions. Their actions can say one thing, just like God says in Proverbs, um, the Lord speaks on um, dining with the king. Like they say, come eat, but they really don't mean it, right? They're, they're, they're just looking to deceive you. And I'm paraphrasing, but people tell you, come sit, dine with me, but they're counting the cost. There's deceit behind it. So yeah, their actions say one thing, but their hearts mean a different thing. So you will never know a person by their actions. You'll know a person by the fruit they bear. And in order to really know them by the fruit they bear, you yourself have to have a relationship with God because he'll speak to you about that person. Warning comes before destruction. So he'll warn you about the person and the fruit that they bear. And even if those fruits look edible, God will tell you, don't eat that. That ain't for me. Okay, so you'll truly only know a person even by the fruit they bear if you have a relationship with God, because he's the one that's going to give you discernment and guidance about that person. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? So anyways, the Lord um, was speaking to me about this verse and do not look at the appearance or at his physical stature. The Lord gave him this command and it's broken up in two pieces. He says, don't look at his appearance, or at his physical stature, right? And <laughs> my face. If you don't know by now, if you're new, because there's a lot of new subscribers, when the Holy Spirit is upon me, my nose starts to itch. And I'm now, see it's been happening since I started this platform. And now I see my sisters in Christ that will be doing a word and they're like, my nose is itching. Okay, it's, it's just the Holy Spirit, y'all. I don't have fleas or, yeah, I got allergies, but it's not allergies, just FYI. Let me make this quick. So do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature. The Lord broke those things up, right? And I'm reading the New King James Version, but I'm going to cross-reference it with the King James Version. But catch this. This is what the Lord was speaking to me this morning. Don't look at his appearance or his physical stature. Some people would look at that verse and they're like, Lord, his stature is his height. And you're saying, don't look at his appearance. So if I'm looking at his appearance, I'm also looking at his height. That's a part of his appearance. He appears tall, strong, handsome, right? But you split these things up. Do not look at his appearance or his physical stature. I would say that, again, his stature falls in alignment with how he appears to me, right? When I'm, if I'm talking to a guy and my friend say, Nina, how does he look? They're asking me, what does his appearance look like? I'm going to be like, he's tall, dark, and handsome. So we automatically put the stature, which is the height. That's what stature means, right? Height. We automatically give the height when our friends ask us, how does the person look? Because that's a physical feature, right? Yes. But how God explained it to me also, yes, stature means height. 
the loftiness of a person, the tallness of a person, right? But another definition for stature, and y'all can look this up, another definition for stature is reputation due to achievements. Reputation due to achievements, okay? It's the status of a person, their account, okay? Y'all better catch this, their account, their influence their level of fame, their position, their weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, what they carry. That is another definition of stature. It's not just a physical height. It's who they are. What's your reputation? How, how, how well known are you, right? That's another definition of stature. Sorry, y'all, someone called and it messed up my video. So how the Lord explained this to me is, the people that he's sending you to, to, um, to anoint in a sense, right? And this is a lot for marriage, okay? God has anointed you as a wife. You're able to be a wife and walk into a marriage season because God anointed you to be a wife. A uh, definition of to anoint is to be chosen, divinely chosen for something, for a position. God has anointed you as a wife. God has anointed you as a husband, okay? And when he puts you together with this person, and for many of you guys, it's a restoration, right? It's a restoration. And you're looking at the appearance of things and you're like, God, you said you're restoring, but the way this person is speaking to me, the way that they're talking like the things that they've done to me, this just don't add up. Like, what do you mean? But God is saying, don't look at that person's physical appearance. Okay, don't look at what things appear to be. Not necessarily their looks. Don't look at what things appear to be. Yeah, they're coming at you sideways. They're being rude. Um, they're saying a whole bunch of things. I'm never gonna come back to you. Whatever the case may be, God is saying, don't look at what it appears to be. Look at what I told you. And then you go on to say, well, Lord, look at what this person took me through. Like, look at their, they're known for being a, a ladies man. Like, and you're restoring me to this. He's saying, don't look at their stature. Their stature is their reputation, their account, right? You're adding up stuff that they've done to you. You're looking at their account. And God is saying, don't look at that person's stature, don't look at what is what it appears to be and don't look at what it's been before. Don't look at their, their reputation, their status, who they're known for. He's saying just like he did to Samuel, the oil will run over who he's chosen. And if he's chosen them, it's for purpose. Yeah, you can say, well, Lord, uh, this is not something that I want. Great but that oil is not gonna flow over anybody else aside from who God told you is that person. <laughs> the, the, the anointing oil will not flow until the right person is underneath it. God has anointed you to be a wife, anointed you to be a husband, right? And for my ladies, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So that coming together with you brings them into a level of favor they have never experienced before because there's a certain level of favor that they only get through their wives, through being connected to the, the person that God has um, ordained them to be with. So God has anointed you as a wife and you're bestowing that anointing upon your spouse by being a part of their life. And God is saying, don't look at what things appear to be. Also, don't look at the stature, not just height, appearance. Don't look at their reputation, their status what they're known for, their account. Don't look at those things either. Keep your eyes on God because he looks at the heart. Keep your eyes on God because he looks at the heart. He weighs the heart. And another word for stature is weight. W-E-I-G-H-T. God weighs the heart. He doesn't weigh the sin of the person and the things that they've done. If he did that... <laughs> Help us all, Lord, because we'd be on a straight path to hell. Somebody raise their hand. Let me raise mine. But God is saying, don't look at what things appear to be. And he's not just saying how they look. But even if they're acting out and you're like, man, this is an adult. Like, Lord, 
this person's acting like a five year old and you're telling me to um yeah lord this this ain't this math ain't math in it god knows what he's doing you can't look at the appearance of what things seem to be and how how the lord explained this to me was he said if you're in a store and god is so smart because i can't think of this on my own he said if you're in a store and excuse me guys if you're in a store and a baby's crying and the baby's screaming ah, and you've been in a store for two hours or an hour because you know as women we can stay in a store for a long time you're on target for an hour the same baby you've heard screaming the whole time you've been in there you're going to immediately assume this child is a crier that they cry all the time right this is a crying baby They've been crying for the last hour, so this baby is one of those crying babies. You have your quiet babies, you have the ones that cry every 10 minutes. We're gonna assume they're a crier, okay? Because they've been doing it for the last hour, but that's not necessarily the case. That baby could have a sickness that's internal, that's making them cry because of the pain that they're feeling. Y'all better catch this. That baby can have a fever, a stomach ache. They could have been diagnosed with something at birth. You won't know that because you can't see internally what they're going through. But the reason why they're acting, the reason why things appear to be different is because the pain that they're feeling inside doesn't mean they're crying because they're normally a crying baby. They're crying because they're pain. The pain that they're going through internally, y'all better catch this, is making them scream externally. So you're associating them as a crying baby when no, they're actually hurting and it's making them act out. And a lot of prodigals are like this. And a prodigal is not somebody that walked away from you. A prodigal is someone who walks outside of the will of God. A lot of prodigals are this way. You see them when you talk to them, they're, they're rude and just throwing jabs and uh, raising their voice and doing the most. But they're only doing that because of pain that's internal. And you can't see that, but God sees it, which is why God tells us he doesn't look at people the way that we do. We go by what things appear to be. We base things off appearance and stature. But God says, I look at the heart. He can see what's going on internally that's making them act out externally. And God will put a calling on a person's life. And you may be like how... um. What's his name? Ananias, um, who went to heal Paul's um, blindness when God had blinded him, right? The Lord sent Ananias to lay hands on him so that he can get his sight back, right? Ananias was like, Lord, that man is a murderer. You want me to go lay hands on him? The Lord spoke to Ananias. He says, that's the one I've chosen. He couldn't see internally what was happening with Paul. Paul didn't understand the position of God. He didn't know God. So because of that misunderstanding, he exhibited um, evil behavior externally and he was murdering Christians. But God saw internally what he was battling with. And God knew, okay, this is I'm, I'm choosing him. I'm just gonna have to give him an experience so that he knows who I am. But Ananias was like, God, you tripping. Lay hands on him. Yeah, we need to lay hands on him. Go ahead, lay your, your rod, like your iron fist, lay it on him, Lord. And the Lord was like, no, that's who I chose. Yeah, he was up there killing Christians, doing the most, but that there was an internal thing going on within Paul's heart, which made him act externally in an evil manner. But now that God had fixed that and he knew who God was, now you can walk in your calling. It doesn't matter what other people don't understand. It's who has God called? And if he's called that person and anointed that person for this position, guess what? That oil is only going to flow when they get in that position. Nobody else can make that oil flow. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. A lot of prodigals act out because of pain that they're dealing with internally. 
Some prodigals have been raped when they were kids. Some suffer from mommy issues, daddy issues. Some just don't trust people because they haven't had anyone in their lives that they've been able to trust. And I'm not giving them excuses. I'm just giving y'all what the Lord gave me. We can't see what they're going on, what's going on within them internally. God will fix that. It's not our job to fix what's going on with them internally. It's not our job to heal their hurt and pain. That's up to God. God had to do that for Paul. Ananias ain't go over there to heal his broken heart and to teach him about God. The job was already done. Ananias simply went to do what God told him to do. Lay hands on him so that he can regain his sight and he can go ahead and start this mission I have for him. But the, the healing was already done through God. God does the healing. He fixes things internally. You don't have to do that part. He does that. And that's because he can see inside why a person is acting the way they're acting. We can't see it. And that person is not going to tell us everything. So we're just going to assume that person is rebellious. You rebellious. You don't even know Jesus. Look how you acting. Like, I know God ain't called me to stand and wait for you because the way you coming at me, I'm about to go from holy to hood, Lord. Like, I know, like, maybe I heard you wrong, Lord. No, you didn't. That person is acting that way because of internal pain that you may not see, but God could see it. And he already called that person before they were even born. So they've been chosen since day one. He knew how they were going to act, what they were going to do. He knew that they were going to step outside of his wheel, but he also knows that he's God and he puts anybody back into position. He has the last say so. At the sound of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Not one, two, three knees, every knee. So that means everybody going to come to the understanding of who God is regardless. So don't judge by the appearance, how things look to you, how things appear to be. Don't judge by stature, not just height, but reputation, the account of the person, their status. Don't judge by that. Take what God is giving you and walk according to what he said to do and call it a day. You don't have to understand it. So that's all, y'all. Let me get out of here because my appointment is in one minute. Good thing the place is five minutes away because, yeah, I'm going to be late. But I love y'all. Um, have a great day. We'll talk soon. Mwah.